Good morning, folks. This is Brian. We got to play RQG last night. Uh, if you remember from last time, it was kind of, okay, what do we do next? Where can we go? And then, of course, what do I prep? Um, and so I didn't really prep much. <laughs> I tried to think of some things to uh, maybe give some direction and orchestration to events. But anyway, a couple of my players were late. In fact, one was really, really late. <laughs> So the, the live play, if, if you're into that kind of thing, is in the description. And um, so it's just kind of like, what are we going to do? And so they decided that they wanted to go, oh, uh, Josh Dacos said, let's go check out the Storm Bowl Shrine at Roomgate and see if the God Talker there can give us any idea about this. Because we think it's a chaos creature and they, they you know, anti-chaos people should, maybe might know something about this and what we can do. Sorry, I'm eating on the table and so it's balancing my, my screen okay so they do so and um uh, does every storm bull cultist know all about chaos creatures no but a god talker you know is a semi-priest so probably should know something maybe so i had josh day ghost make a uh a luck roll not an easy one an average one but he rolled a four which was a special okay so this Stormbull cultists, while not having actually interacted with these creatures, from their description, thinks they're crushed kids. If I said that right, maybe the R is silent, the first R is silent, maybe. Karsh kids, that's why, I, that's why I always call them, karsh kids. But anyway, she wants to see these holes, though. Um, so they, they take her out there, and she's looking around. And I made a uh, you know, random encounter roll uh, for the way out there. And what I've done is I use, uh, what's it called? Shoot, where'd it go? Heroes? Uh, oh, the Sartar Companion, right? And it's got this random encounter tip, which I made a copy of so I can keep it out. But there's lots of, you know, normal stuff. You know, herders, farmers, <laughs> that kind of stuff, right? And that's not an encounter necessarily. Oh, I suppose if I was really, really bright, I could turn those into encounters. But what I've decided is that if I get one of those kind of encounters, I go to the encounter table uh, for the, um, the module that I'm stealing some of my material from. And it turned out that that encounter was another Karsh kid. Now, I had to understand these Karsh kids, you know, just looking at them generically, you know, fairly dangerous. And I actually cut down the number that attacked the previous patrol from three to two. I should probably put it back to three, though, because they're not, well, they're kind of dangerous. They're, they're e fairly easy to take out. They're not that hard to kill. So, um, anyway, it's surprising. surprise. Everybody. Hooked up, in fact, it popped up right underneath, um, Juchi. So Juchi had to make a, make a deck save to, you know, whoa, he didn't fall down the hole or get eaten right on the spot. And it pops up and so it starts attacking. And, and, you know, it doesn't know who these guys are, one from another. So I roll randomly, who's it attacking? And, you know, on the Struck Rank 1, it does that spit thing that ended up going to Juchi, which kind of made sense. And then it's got uh, a claw and a tongue attack on six, and then a bite on seven. And I'm thinking, especially the claw, when I got to the claw attack, I'm going, it's got six legs. It should be making at least three claw attacks. You know, <laughs> that kind of thing, right? So, <clears throat> but it just did one. It did a claw attack on Juju again, uh, but it did a tongue attack on somebody else. But uh, that person, I think, dodged. But so Juchi got gooped up, wasn't able to break out, and then got clawed in the abdomen, just a couple points of damage. And so he's he's defending this round and backing up kind of stuff. Pop, 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 maybe, I don't know. <laughs> you want a location for the, the goo? <laughs> maybe I should have. That'd be interesting. Is it in the legs or is it the arm? You know, that kind of stuff. Anyway, uh, but I took my camera down. Yeah, so I don't have my my grid map up, and I'm no, I've got envisioned there, there's the hole kind of around it. It pops up, 
kind of assume that YouTube's in the back. Otherwise, if it was in the front, it would be in the tunnel kind of thing. So, but everybody's like right there. And so let's make attacks at everybody and everybody can essentially make attacks at it. Except I did have the, the God Talker off on the other side. So the God Talker, first thing she does is throw up, um, there's a, uh, not face chaos, impede, impede chaos. So, so it's got negative to attack her. Um, and then she throws up some protection just to protect herself. And then she draws her bow and so she starts to shoot at it. We don't even get that far, right? Uh, and everybody else on the first round, they've got a standard sort of things. And um, while the uh, one of the players, oh, we actually had a player miss the entire session. And so at first, when we only have, you know, I'm missing three guys. I'm not going to start yet. And then, then one of the players shows up, apologize, saying it's not a problem because we're already waiting for somebody else anyway. Um, and so there's a lot of discussion that's not recorded. Um, but it turns out that. Just after we finished making statements of intent, uh, the second player, Davin's character, Davin's player, um, showed up. So he was able to actually run his guy. So that was good. I don't know his basic, um, you know, he, he throws strength. Um, he's got his, his sorcery already on his sword. You know, draw the sword and then mobility to speed things up, right? So he does that the first round. Um, we still had a rest to do. We figured she'd do blade sharp and she got, she would have a great ax out. It's not something that you, you know, have, it's something you walk with kind of deal, right? So she already has it out, do the blade sharp and then, um, an attack. I think that's what we did. Actually had an attack. So <clears throat> during that first round, things are happening. Oh, Josh Dacos gets spit out on the second round. <clears throat> but on the first round, uh, Rester hits it in one of the legs, you know, takes it to negative four, 10 points of damage to, you know, the critter. And normal Karsh kids have uh, 11 hit points. This one had a plus 2d6 constitution, um, which was interesting because there was a discussion about uh, chaos features for chaos creatures. And there wasn't a list of, you know, you know power times five to see if it has a um a chaos feature but one of the players who else has the best jerry was reading there's a little paragraph that says that the first time around to a chaos creature roll it, it has a chaotic feature but then there are other creatures because right before karsh kids is the jackal bear when i was reading the document says a 35 percent chance of having an additional chaos feature oh so that's how it's working okay so everybody gets one and then there's certain creatures have multiples on top of that Interesting, or possibly multiple attacks. Like Brew, you have to roll for to see if they have, I guess, an additional one. So I that changed a few things in my game plan with the with especially with Brew. But anyway, so um, she takes that leg out, brings it down to like eight hit points, and the next round it spits on on Josh Dacos. He gets all bound up. Um, but David is really fast with his rapier with his mobility on, right? So he goes and strike rank one. And he ended up doing, well, did an armor bypass because he's got that uh, neutralized armor thing. Uh, ended up doing 10 points of damage as well. So that, that kills it. You know, two rounds, it's dead. <laughs> now, did miss with the tongue thing. That tongue thing is pretty, pretty rough. Uh, oh, we also did some more discussions about um, the fetch, um, and I had I had pulled the reins in really heavy uh, earlier because uh, the fetch was just the way we were interpreting the fetch was just completely out of control. Um, so I reined it way in, but after doing some more reading, especially as we were talking about spirit combat, because the fetch was going to engage this thing in spirit combat. <laughs> Animals, spirit combat with animals. They've got no charisma. They have power. They've got no spirit mat, you know, uh, spirit combat skill. Although uh, in the spirit combat section it says that you know races have their own, but everybody's got a twenty plus their magic bonus modifier. So the Karsh kid essentially had a thirty percent on its spirit combat. But with just a 19 power and a zero charisma, it's only doing a D6 of 
of um, of spirit combat damage. Just, but you get other cre- other animals, right? Who've got like no magic modifier, and you can just subsume animals left and right. So I've got. Do you guys allow spirit combat with animals? Does it have to be an actual intelligent creature to do spirit combat? I don't know. How do you handle that? I'd like to know. So if you've got it, give me a reply. Let me know what you guys think. Because I'm still pulling my hair out on this spirit combat with animals thing. But anyway, so um, it did attempt to do spirit combat. But it was a tie, thankfully. Um, And then on the second round, strike rank one is dead. We took out another leg, which took us total hit points below zero, so you know, it's dead. Um, at that point, the uh, the God Talker had her bow out, so she shot it anyway. <laughs> so what do we do with some people? What do we do with the dead body? Some people want to drag it into town, um, but no, it's a chaos creature. Burn it, burn it, burn it. So they end up burning the body. Okay, so they do in fact know it's a crushed kid, and um, they know some of its well. But God Talker knew some of his attack thing. He was telling him about that. You know, it's got you know a paralytic bite, and it's got this uh, sticky poison spit thing. It's got tongue that's really nasty, you know that kind of stuff. Um, it did try a bite on somebody, but it ended up getting a shield. So, and, and that was kind of a discussion on. Now I can't see where we are, and how do we know where it's all engaged? Well, it just popped up. Everybody's there, so everybody's engaged with it. It's got no facing because it's all head, <laughs> all head and all legs. Uh, so there was a bit of that discussion, uh, but yeah, I'm going to put my camera back up for these pop-up things where I can draw things out. <laughs> it helps, uh, convey my vision of the encounter to the rest of the party. Um, so that was the car shit. They go back to uh, room gate, um, cause they're going to go tell Queen Lika that it was car kids that got this thing. Um. And then, of course, there's concern. Okay, if there's cars, kids, how was this infestation? What's going on? Are there more holes? Because that's what the the God Talker's going to do. Because the uh, party told her that you know this tunnel, straight as an arrow, um, was looked like it was going right towards the the chaos grounds. So she's going to check that area out and look see if there are any more holes popping up. So the party spends the night in uh, Rune Gate. Next day heads to Apple Lane. Um, and I was going to, um, if there was an encounter on the way to our app, Apple Lane, I was going to have that be uh, the baboons, right? Attacking Griggle's Pawn Shop, because, you know, I'm ret- retconning that. <laughs> and, um, but it happened on the full moon, and the full moon was yesterday. <laughs> okay, this is my, stay around for, for a whole week so we know they're coming on the full moon, which is like next week. Yeah, that's not going to work. So, uh, Kill, squash that. Spend the night at Apple Lane, and they head down to Black Spear. Spend the night there. The next morning, there's an encounter, and I roll, and it's baboons. So I'm thinking this is an assassination attempt from the baboons that are, you know, the big bad evil guy, right? <laughs> so I pull up um, a uh, the spreadsheet I have for those guys. And okay, how many of them? Think? It's not gonna be the whole troop. The whole troop's up, you know, where they are. And the troop is fifteen to twenty, and I look at that number and I see fives <laughs> jumping out at me. Okay, so five of them: three male, two female. And um, uh, these guys are pretty tough, and I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of find that balance of, um something that is dangerous enough to the players that, you know, it's a danger. Um, I don't really run anything that just walked through them necessarily. Although the, you know, three of them have died so far. <clears throat> so there's dangerous things out there. So anyway, it's getting late. One of my players going, hey guys, I'm, I'm hitting my, my, uh, my wall. I said, well, let's just do this first deck because they're doing an ambush, but People make scan and listen rolls. Okay, there's there's nothing in the trees that's going on, and sling stones come out. First, I was thinking all of them throwing sling stones, but the females actually are, are pretty good with magic, and they've got disruption. So three sling stones and two disruptions coming out. Who they hit? Uh, two slings on Jarstick, ghost one on Juchi, uh, one 
uh, disruption on Josh State goes when <laughs> disruption on Juju. I don't know why they're hitting on these two guys, but that's what's happening. And so and it's just slingstone. So what? And then, you know, Josh State goes in his, his uh, chariot. So the chariot's protecting up to his abdomen. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like that. Um, but the slingshot was a special. And the special um, is a crushing weapon, so he gets a, a crush type damage. And these baboons are tough. Um, in fact, one of them has a strength spell cast. Okay, so it does a d8 plus half the damage bonus. So damage bonus is 2d6. So half the damage bonus is 1d6 uh, plus max damage bonus, which is 6. So that's a d8 plus a d6 plus 6. That's a max of 20. Um, and the, sh the, the, uh, chariot stops 16 and he's got six on his legs. So even if he maxed out, it's not going to get through, but I, I rolled just to see, did it punch through <laughs> the, the, uh, the wall of the, the, the side of the chariot. It didn't, it got close though. So, oh no, rather it did. It did 18 points of damage. Oh, maybe there's another one. Okay. Second sling stone at, at, uh, Jarstakos. I forgot where that hit, but that guy's got a 3d6 damage bonus. Um, but with, you know, halved, but it wasn't a special, it was a regular hit. Um, I think he got his shield up for that one. Yeah, it was in like the chest or abdomen, and the shield was there. So it didn't get through to do any damage either. And then one hit Juchi. Um, I don't remember how much damage that one did. Or if it missed. I think it missed. I think he dodged that one. And then the two disruptions, you know, a D3, uh, both left arms for both of them. And then that's where we kind of ended the, the session. There's some discussion about, you know, what are these creatures that are still in the woods? Because three are coming out. You know, the three male baboons did slings and then they're charging. Uh, and the two in the back are in the woods are the, the females, you know, they're kind of behind the tree, shoot out their disruption, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm thinking, yeah, it's not easy to see. Um, if, it, if it had a special on a scan, I'd say, yeah, you saw they were actually like all baboons. Um, everybody knows there's three baboons coming out, so you wonder what are the two of the humans or what? So, okay. You know, no media special, so you don't necessarily know. Uh, there's some player disgruntlement about that. Maybe they're, they're shooting at us and throwing stuff and stuff. Well, yeah, the guy's throwing actually coming out. Now, if I make another scan roll, um, if it's a regular, you just need a regular success to see, you know, that, that they were in fact there because you're, you're concentrating on what you're doing, right? Um, so, yeah, a couple of them made it. Yeah, there are two more baboons back there. That's where we ended the session. Uh, it's just over two hours, if I remember right, from the upload. And, you know, that was it. We'll see what comes out of this one. Happy gaming.